go. Well, welcome to our Bible study. Um, I'm so glad you are here. Um, whether you're here in person or watching uh, the uh, recording afterwards, we're glad you're part of this uh, Bible study ministry of our church. So uh, if you're new to our study, this is the book, uh, The Reservoir. Yep. If you're looking for what we're um, doing, um, you can get it on here. Amazon if you're looking for it. So um, tonight we're going to be on uh, page, um, what, 56, if you want to find that. Um, but uh, I want us uh, to begin with prayer. And um, tonight I just want to um, start by um, just observing a moment of silence uh, as we think about uh, the tragedy that happened in Uvalde. Let's just start with a moment of silence. Oh God, our hearts are so very heavy, but we know that your comforting love is strong enough to carry us through these tragic times. Tonight, we pray for the families mourning the death of their loved ones. We pray for the shooter's family dealing with their own horror. We ask that you would grant everyone that was affected, grant them strength to deal what li with what lies ahead. Lord, as we open your word this night, we pray that you would open our hearts. Help us to celebrate you as our Abba. Give us a childlike faith, entrusting our lives to your protective, providing love. And all God's people said, Amen. So let's look at uh, the book here. Um, I'm just going to read this first part in case someone who is watching doesn't have a, a copy. Um, it says, what set Jesus apart from the disciples was the intimate relationship he had with the Father. Jesus addressed God as Abba, Father. This manner of addressing God indicates closeness, love, and a trusting relationship like that of a child to their parent. Jesus was not afraid to talk to God to share his deepest feelings. In the Garden of Gethsemane, at his moment of greatest need, Jesus prayed. His prayer was full of faith. For you, all things are possible. His prayer was honest. Remove this cup from me. And in the end, his prayer expressed a desire to do the will of God. Yet not what I want, but what you want. So the word Abba, um, it's uh, an Aramaic word. Um, Aramaic is, uh, was the street language of Israel. It was the everyday language uh, of Jesus. Uh, and it was, it simply meant father. It's, um, you know, but it's an affectionate, it's a close, um, it's an intimate connection uh, that, uh, that a son would have, um, you know, with the child. Uh, some people uh, refer to it as daddy, you know, kind of uh, dear daddy. Um, so, and it's amazing to me um, that the only time that we have this from the mouth of Jesus is this Garden of Gethsemane prayer that we're going to get to. Uh, this Abba Father, if it is possible, um, and we'll maybe uh, talk about maybe why he prayed in that way at this time uh, of his life. There's only two other uh, times that the word Abba appears, and that is both in the writings of Paul. Um, it's in Romans 8 and Galatians 4, if you want to look those up, but uh, it's Paul referencing this, this prayer that we're going uh, to look at tonight. Um, and the way I always think of uh, Abba is, uh, think of a um, a child in daycare, uh, and it's time to be picked up, and the dad walks uh, through the door, and the, the child lights up, the child runs into the father's arms, and, you know, the, the dad picks him up, spins him around, and, you know, say, I've missed you, you know, how was your day kind of thing. That's the, the image that I have uh, when you think about uh, the word Abba. It's that, that kind of personal, intimate relationship that a child has um, with their father, so... Um, 
Oh, is my screen freezing? Yes. Yes. Hold up. Hold up. I've been having internet issues tonight, so. Boy. I'm so sorry. I hope y'all got half of what I said. So um, hopefully that will uh, be better in a minute. So um, so let's look at um, let's look at this uh, scripture reading. Uh, Jim is going to read it for us. And then we'll talk about what jumps out at you. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba. Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Okay, think about that just for a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Verizon. See on the horizon. We're good. He said he's having internet problems. Well, we're waiting for Pastor Jim. Uh, do you know or Charles? I, I I seem to recall that every time the word Abba is used, it's followed by Father. Is that correct or? Um, I can't tell you that off the top of my head. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It is, yes. So it's never used singly. Yeah, and I know that because uh, this is the only time that Jesus um, prays in this way, and then Paul just references this um, twice uh, in his writings. And so he says, you know, when uh, think of when Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, he just kind of reiterates what um, what Jesus said, so, yeah. So yeah, what else jumps out at y'all in this text? Yes, Jim. Well, to me, it was just the, the unbelievable, overwhelming stress and emotion that Jesus had to be under at that moment. I mean, it's very, it's very descriptive in the scripture itself, you know, to the point of death. And, and of course, we know about the sweating of the blood, which is, which is a real condition. Uh, so I, I just can't imagine what he was going through, uh, even though he knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, you know, if we think of this Abba, um, this Abba concept is kind of uh, climbing into the lap of God. Um, you know, this is the moment of his, the deepest distress uh, that he experienced uh, in his life. And what does he do? But he climbs up into the lap of God uh, and kind of allows God to, to hug him and say, you know, it's going to be okay kind of thing. And I think that's um, prescriptive of the way that we should live our lives. That when we are in those moments of deep distress, um, we should climb up into the, the lap of God and just say whatever it is, you know, on our heart uh, and allow God to, to give us that holy hug. Yes, Carol. Well, and I kind of look at it as um, when you're a child, you can do that because you can climb into your daddy's lap and surrender completely because daddy will take care of you. But when you're an adult and you have all kinds of responsibilities, it's not quite as easy to do. But if you're able to, then he does take care of you. It's just that surrender. Yes. Yeah. And I think this is perhaps one of the things that Jesus means when he says, unless you have a faith of a child, you know, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, you know, I, I never take that as kind of a jab to people, but it's, it's uh, once again, <clears throat> describing the kind of faith that we are to have. 
that even you know very old people are supposed to to think of God as their loving Father, as their protective Father, and to entrust their lives into to God's hands. So, um, yeah. But we lose that, don't we? I think that's why all of us need to spend time with kids um, every so often, just <laughs> to see the way that they see the world, um, and to help us see the world in that way too. So, yeah. Anything else? Yes, Jim. I think what strikes me is um, how extraordinary this is. What a dramatic change it is to the perception of who God is and who God can be in one's life. Uh, uh, I think the, the Old Testament tendency was to, there was a loving and caring God that God was kept at a distance and what was, uh, what was probably noteworthy was God's uh, holiness and transcendence set apart from people uh, in the design of the temple. Uh, God occupied the Holy of Holies on the top of Mount Sinai that the people weren't to approach. Uh, uh, God, God was a loving and caring God, but, uh, but maintained a kind of distance. And, and this is a revolutionary change in that understanding of who God can be for us uh, at the moment we need God most. Uh, yes. And it, and it, you know, it strikes me that, that, uh, that uh, in our greatest time of need, uh, uh, the parents who are suffering the loss of their children, you know, uh, to to crawl into that to the lap of a loving father is much more comforting and reassuring than to go before the Holy of Holies uh, and uh, to pray to or be supported by a more transcendent set apart God. Uh, but that's I think that's a major change. What what <laughs> amazes me is the dramatic change that Jesus introduces into the whole spiritual realm that isn't something that people could begin to grasp overnight. Uh, it took time for that uh, understanding of God to evolve. Yes, yes. The, uh, one of the other things I notice in this passage is the, the give and take uh, that Jesus has with Abba Father. You know, he says, um, Abba Father, you know, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Um, but ultimately, he says, you know, I want to do your will. Um, there's that give and take. It's a lot like when uh, Emma comes to me and says, um, I know you're probably going to say no, but, you know, but she still wants to ask just in case, you know, that I... I, in fact, will say yes. And it's that give and take. And I think it's, you can only do that when you have a relationship, uh, a deep relationship with someone. And I, I kind of sense that in this, this passage as well. Um, Jesus knew what the best thing to do, but it was just too much. And so he was willing to give it a chance. You know, maybe, just maybe God will say um, yes to what I'm asking, but um, I ultimately want uh, what, what God wants uh, and what God's will is for my life. But um, I think that give and take in a relationship is a healthy thing when we think about, um, you know, our relationship with God. So, yeah. you see anything else? Yes, Jim. I I think too that uh, you know Christ is really he's kind of like anticipating his role as being a sacrifice for our sins for everyone's sins and that it's just you know it, it's just what god is asking him to embrace is is uh to be a sin bearer for us he was sinless so yes mm -hmm. So the, uh, the first question in the book says, do you think there is a connection between Jesus' address of God as Abba and his willingness to surrender to God's will? So is there a connection between that intimate um, 
relationship that he has with God and his willingness to ultimately uh, surrender. Yes, Sally. Yes, I, I think so. And, and and you've already expressed this. It's like coming to your dad. And for me, it's daddy, you know, Alba daddy. And uh, coming to daddy knowing very much what he's probably going to say. But because I have this close relationship with him, I can face him eyeball to eyeball and face to face and say, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I can just express myself, all the feelings, all the distress, but yet I, I don't want this to be of me. I want to hear what you want me to do. And I know that what you want me to do. So I just, I'm going to do this. And it's a pleasing, it's an acceptance. It's I've got this, you've got this, we're in it together. And I need the reassurance of just meeting you eyeball to eyeball and being in your arms saying everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's that relationship. Yes, thank you, Sally. So I think so. Yeah. Yes, Carol. Well, and add to Sally, I think it also shows his respect of his Abba that he will do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a young child recognizing that uh, mom and dad know best. You know, I don't want to have to do this. Okay. Uh, but ultimately, mom and dad know best. And so, yeah. <clears throat> and then they become teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please, Jim, please. Yeah, I, I think, too, that, you know, we have to remember that Jesus was God in the flesh. Right. That he and God were, like, tethered together. And, and in a way that, you know, no one ever could or ever would be able to undo that. And it kind of reminds me of that passage from uh, Ecclesiastics about uh, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. That kind of tightness in a relationship, tethering. Yes, yeah. And, you know, maybe to use that um, understanding, maybe that's one reason that Jesus was able to even voice that you know, take this cup away from me, uh, knowing that deep intimate relationship that he had with God, knowing that he's not going to be judged, uh, knowing that ultimately God's will would prevail, but just to, to be able to voice that um, without hesitation, I think, shows the, the deepness and the closeness of that father-son relationship within the Trinity. Yeah. Something... Uh, <laughs> Something else in this text that I uh, noticed that I didn't uh, talk about earlier was, you know, he's with Peter, James, and John in this story, right? These are, um, yeah, I mean, we know these guys as not always the as disciples, not always getting things right, uh, but these are Jesus' dear, close friends, right? Uh, these are the people that he hung around with, that, um, that he appreciated, um, but even in the, in, the, in the midst of this moment, he still needed his Abba, his father, right? Uh, and I think that's very telling that sometimes, um, yes, it's wonderful to have dear, close friends, um, but sometimes we just need, as I think Sally it has already alluded to, sometimes there's just some things that we can tell our Abba Father that we can't tell anyone else. Uh, and just to, to recognize that and to uh, honor that, I think, um, the fact that we have someone that we can be completely honest with without judgment, um, even when we have very deep, close friends in our life. Um, sometimes we still need our Abba. Yes, Charles. And this is seen in the fact in the next verse that those dear friends fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Here's Anything? an example. Yes. If I may. Yes. Nelly. yes. Uh, okay. Um, I was very, very, very close to my father, earthly father. And while growing up, I could come to him with anything and everything. And I literally would sit right next to him and look him right in the eyes and listen to every word he had to say. And, and um, ask. very seldom did I ask permission to do something because um, I already knew what, he, what his answer would be. But on the bigger things, when I would come as a, uh, I was a 19 year old and 
I came to with something very, very special. And I came to him and sat down and told him what I was thinking and asked for his permission. And his words were, now Sally, you didn't even have to come to me and ask permission because I already trusted you to make the right decision and go, just go and do whatever you choose to do. And, but it, it's that same, same feeling of wanting to be with your Abba, your daddy, and have the reassurance and the conviction and out of respect for him to uh, get the stamp of approval. Yes. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. I, just, I, just, I just remembered that. Yes. Yeah. So. And you know, sometimes um, when we go to our Abba or even our, our earthly father, um, sometimes it's not permission, sometimes it's not validation, sometimes it's just simply saying, I'm sorry you're dealing with this, I love you dearly. And we will get through this together kind of thing. You know, there's no answers, there's no permission, but it's just the sense that, you know, I'm not alone. Um, yeah, this is really tough. It's not going to be easy, but I know that I'm not alone in this and that I know that I'm loved and that's, that's enough. Sometimes that's, yes, Sally. I have to add to this because uh, it's, you know, what comes, what goes around comes around, right? Sometimes, usually. So daddy is in the hospital on his deathbed and I am there, all of us are there. And dad's hanging on for dear life for some reason. And the pacemaker has been removed, but yet we're still living on. And I remember going to his bedside, holding his hand and he couldn't really speak very much at that point. Although I held his hand, looked him in the eyes, and I said to daddy, it's okay, daddy. It's time to go home. We will all be there for mother. We will all make sure that she will be well taken care of. And then he opened his mouth and he said, I love you. He, he whispered the words, I love you. And he, hmm. then he went home within the, the next morning, mm -hmm. knowing very well that all was well. Yes. So what goes around sometimes comes around. Yes, yes, powerful. Yeah, I think I saw your hand, Jim. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just thinking about the cup of suffering uh, that Jesus was uh, asking to be removed. I, I don't think it was something for himself. I, I really get the feeling that the cup of suffering he was talking about, that he's going to be taking on the sins of the world, and for the first time ever, he's going to be separated from God. Yes, mm. and you can imagine, mm. yeah, you can imagine what that feels like. Yeah. Good point. <clears throat> Y'all are quiet tonight. <laughs> well, uh, I, uh, as I was uh, thinking about uh, this Abba Father, I, I thought about uh, Chris Tomlin's song, Good, Good Father. Um, and I just thought, uh, we've, we've sung this before in worship, but uh, the lyrics are these. It says, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of your voice in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You know just what I need before I say a single word. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am. Um, and I love these lyrics because our identity, um, where according to these lyrics, are found within the love of God. Uh, the fact that um, you know God whispers our name, tells us, that we are never alone uh, and the fact that we are loved. And so that's who we are, knowing that God is the God of love. Um, it's not anything that we do or not do. It's simply we are deeply loved by God and that is enough. And so, um, you know, in other words, we don't have to work, do anything in order to earn God's favor or for God to become our Abba. God is already our Abba um, simply because we are... Um, Abba's child, and that is that is enough. Um, 
so I think those uh, I think those lyrics are great. So yes, Lois. Uh, yeah, I I don't know if anybody ever thought of this, but um, we we say uh, we're talking about how Jesus felt, and and I, I can't help but wonder how God the the Abba part of this felt. It had to be hard to to let your child go through this. Yes, and, and I know they're they're holy. They're you know. <laughs> They're above everything, but they had to have feelings or Jesus wouldn't be praying like this. And so I have to think that God had feelings also. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, Jim. I just to add to Lois's point, that, that kind of reminds me of Isaac and Abraham when he had bring him up the mountain. Uh, Although Isaac uh, didn't, to my knowledge, didn't call Abraham Abba, but he did call him father. Uh, but he must have known that something wasn't right, yet he never once questioned Abraham. And he went up that mountain, not really knowing what was going to happen. And how did Abraham have to feel inside, yeah. back to Lois's point, yes, yes. as the father? Yeah, yeah. And I, actually, I would argue that um, Isaac did question the father because he kept asking, where, where is the lamb? You know, where is the ram that we're going to? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's the yeah. same thing as, you know, um, this cup of suffering kind of thing. Um, I don't think, I personally don't think uh, Isaac knew what was going on yet, at least at the, at the beginning. But um, yeah, it, it's a good, I think it's a good analogy to think about. Um, yeah. And the whole, I mean, that just has uh, that, I mean, if we can't see Jesus in that story of the father sacrificing the son upon the altar, I mean, that just, that is the gospel, right? Um, the father sacrificing, yeah. spitting the blood of the son um, for the sake of, you know, it, that's, that's just, that's a very powerful story to me. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it makes me think of, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world when Abraham says, there's the lamb over there in the bushes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for the conversation. We're going to uh, ask uh, Charles to lead us in the Lord's Prayer to close. Um, please, Charles. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for being here. So um, we will see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.